Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Mr. Beast and the filming of his Amazon Prime show Beast Games. As we all know, for the past few months, Mr. Beast has been called out over and over again for some terrible business practices and treating contestants very poorly. But now Mr. Beast has been officially sued for his treatment of contestants on the filming of Beast Games. If you like this video, don't forget to like it down below, but now let's jump right into it. So here, as you can see, I have the exact lawsuit up. This is what has been made public. There are some parts that have been redacted, but I just want to go over it, let you guys know what exactly is going on and hit some very important points in here. Now, as you can see here on the right, these are the points listed right here for us. And the things that Mr. Beast and Beast Games is being sued for are failure to pay minimum wages, liquidated damages for failure to pay minimum wages, failure to pay overtime, sexual harassment, failure to prevent harassment, negligent infliction of emotional distress, failure to provide uninterrupted meal breaks, failure to provide uninterrupted rest breaks, failure to pay wages promptly upon termination, failure to provide accurate and itemized wage statements, failure to indemnify for employees' expenses and losses in discharging duties, unfair business practices, false advertising, and declaratory relief. So, as you can see, a whole lot of stuff. Now, this is a 54 page document and I am not a legal scholar, so I'm going to go down and try to summarize and show you guys the important bits. But if you want to look through this document, I will link it down in the description. Now, as you can see here, right at the top under point C, the contestants were employees under California law. The defendant categorized them as volunteers instead of employees to try and get them out of needing breaks, needing overtime, paying the minimum wage and stuff like that. But as we can see here, the contestants were promised and received compensation in exchange for their services. They had no autonomy, def the defendant exercised complete control, and the contestants performed work that was in the usual course and scope of defendant's business, which means that they were in fact employees. Now, even if this is a game show, you can't just have people come on to the show and not pay them and not give them breaks simply because they were quote unquote volunteers. If they're doing work and if they're not, if they don't have autonomy, if you are their boss, then they are an employee and you have to treat them like an employee by giving them a fair wage and fair breaks. But then we scroll down a little farther to the sexual harassment part of this, and it's pretty bad. It says defendants failed to provide a safe and healthful place of employment to the particular and collective detriment of the female contestants who suffered sexual harassment. The purported How to Succeed in Mr. Beast production handbook, which got released a little while ago, and it's kind of Mr. Beast's own guide to how he makes videos. It says in that handbook that it's okay for the boys to be childish, and if talent wants to draw a dick on the whiteboard in the video or do something stupid, you let them. Really do everything that you can do to empower the boys when filming and help them make content. Help them be idiots. The next point says, helping the boys make content, apparently translated to redacted. And then it says, Beast Games created hostile conditions where women were forced to endure the severe embarrassment and unfair disadvantage of redacted. Now, even though this is a redacted statement and it's not released to the public, you can kind of use your imagination to assume what is hidden under those black bars. This is not the first time we've heard Mr. Beast accused of unfair treatment of female contestants. We've actually heard Rosanna Pancino come out and say during one of the hide and seek videos they did that she got very unfair treatment during that whole video. Now, obviously, we don't know if anything in this document is true yet. It has yet to go to court, but some of the things that seem pretty cut and dry are these ones right here failure to pay minimum wage, liquidated damages for failure to pay minimum wage, failure to pay overtime, things like that seem pretty cut and dry. I mean, if they're treating them like volunteers and not employees, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't pay them at all. So this stuff is going to be pretty easy to prove. Now, a couple smaller points I want to talk about here is during the games, apparently contestants were held under strict control and surveillance for days on end. And while they were under surveillance, they were denied all privacy and access to the outside world, fed sporadically and sparsely. Now, this also is not the first time we've heard Mr. Beast do something like this. There was a video released recently about one of the contestants of having to stay in solitary confinement for 100 days where he was barely ever fed. He barely had any interaction with the outside world and he was like going crazy in there. And it sounds like that is similar to what's happening here in Beast Games. They were not given adequate access to hygienic products or medical care. The New York Times reported that over a dozen people who participated in the first installment of Beast Games said they had not received adequate food or medical care and that some competitors had suffered injuries from the physical challenge. 
challenges. The female contestants particularly and collectively suffered as a result of the defendant's actions. The Beast Games work environment systematically fostered a culture of misogyny and sexism where production staff did nothing well. Redacted. Female contestants also were denied. Redacted. Defendants callously dismissed. Redacted. Now, let me fill in some of the blanks here. Not only is this absolutely terrible, I mean, who would even want to go on a game show where you're denied food and medical supplies? That just seems like a lawsuit waiting to happen. And you would think at this point Mr. Beast would be smarter than this and not hold contests where they don't give the contestants food, sleep, or medical care. But the female contestants have actually spoken on what is under these black bars here. And the female contestants, along with not getting regular medical treatment, were not given female hygiene products during the entire show. This is beyond horrendous. You are literally treating people like lab rats and like numbers and not like human beings and giving them basic human rights and access to care. If anyone is defending Mr. Beast at this point after this, I, I don't even know what to tell you. Now here is an interesting point discussing why all the contestants were in fact employees and not volunteers. It says the contestants were promised and received compensation in exchange for their blank on the Beast Games production. Additionally, Mr. Donaldson, or Mr. Beast, made public statements online that he had unconstrained control over Beast Games, and Donaldson had established a pattern and practice of compensating everyone who competes in Mr. Beast competitions, win or lose, even if they competed for only five minutes. The contestants were not working for free for the Beast Games for any humanitarian or any other public service or charitable objective. Defendants hired the contestants to work as contestants on a reality competition show. The contestants in reality were the essential labor component to the entire production. Their work on the show was the entertainment product that defendants were marketing and selling for public consumption and profit. Which basically just means the contestant on the show were the entertainment. That's the whole show, the contestants going through these challenges and trying to be the last one there. Without the contestants, there is no show, making them the essential labor force, hence employees. And like I said earlier, employees deserve minimum wage, overtime, medical treatment, and food. Now, a lot of this part is redacted, but it is still very important, where Mr. Beast had control over the contestants' sleeping arrangements. It says defendants controlled where, how, and whether the contestants slept. Contestants were filed into blank where they slept overnight in blank. Now, even though this whole part mostly is redacted, it's very important to note that Mr. Beast not only had control over their food intake, their medical treatments, their hygiene, also any sleep that they got if they got any sleep. Which I'm sure a lot of you guys are used to if you watch Mr. Beast videos. There's a lot of times where if someone's like in solitary confinement for 100 days or in whatever place for 100 days, they usually interrupt their sleep and wake them up and mess with them and things like that. But this is an official Amazon produced show, which means that it has to be held to very strict standards. Mr. Beast can't just let people not eat and sleep forever for however long he wants, you know? He doesn't have that type of control. And obviously, he's going to get in a lot of trouble for that. Not only that, but the contestants were exposed to dangerous conditions. The contestants were exposed to dangerous circumstances and conditions as a condition of their employment. Even without considering whatever confidential conditions existed behind closed doors while the Beast Games was being filmed, the contestants were subjected to dangerous conditions within the course of their employment. As local news reported, many contestants found it was the poor set conditions rather than the challenges themselves that proved to be the main difficulty. And this means people really aren't even complaining about the games themselves. They're complaining about the safety of the set that they built for the games, which is something that Beast Productions should have really, really taken into consideration. If someone tells me go stay in solitary confinement for 100 days and I get a million dollars, cool. But if the roof caves in in my solitary confinement, I'm going to sue them because that's unsafe conditions that I was promised during my time in this competition. There's also this tweet by Rosanna Pansino, who I mentioned earlier, that says, I have received confirmation from five verified contestants that the first round of Beast Games, a man named Armani Izadi was allowed to compete. He was previously charged with at least 20 counts of battery, kidnapping, pandering, and robbery. He pled guilty to the pimping charge, acknowledging the significant evidence against him. He allegedly also slept near female contestants before being kicked off set for inappropriate behavior. Some of the female contestants confirmed being very uncomfortable around him. He is also friends with Jake Paul and other influencers. Why was there not adequate background checks to catch people like this? Which means not only were the set conditions terrible and all of these practices terrible, but they allowed convicted criminals to compete 
in their show and sleep next to female contestants? What is going on here? What what is what is happening? Like I said before, if you're defending Mr. Beast right now, there's something wrong with you. OK, like I said earlier, it's not proven that everything in this document is true yet. This hasn't gone to court yet. But here at point 97, if this is true, it kind of leads to an air of truth for all of these accusations. And it says the Beast Games production was so void of standards of reasonable care that Mr. Beast allegedly offered to cover the contestants therapy costs. The foregoing acts by defendants created an environment during Beast Games that was so void of humane standards that defendants ended up volunteering to cover the cost of the contestants therapy. It was that bad. The combination of all of the foregoing created an environment in which the contestants suffered severe emotional distress. Defendants, apparently aware of the severe distress they caused the contestants by their lack of reasonable care in conducting their production, allegedly offered to cover the contestants' therapy. Pansino has reported an alleged contestants informing her that defendants knew it was bad because they also offered to provide therapy sessions using their own insurance. Now, why would the production team, Beast Productions, offer to cover contestants' therapy costs if they didn't know this whole thing would cause a lot of emotional distress? If that is true, then that just kind of makes me feel like all of this is true. And honestly, with everything happening with Mr. Beast recently, I don't doubt it. Like I said, I just wanted to go over the broad topics in this document, but if you want to read through the entire 54 pages, you can. I'll link it down in the description. But my final opinion on it is I don't think this case is going to go anywhere, simply because usually things like this are handled out of court. Mr. Beast and Beast Productions and Amazon will probably just settle with the contestants and pay them out. And we probably won't hear any more of this. It will fade into the shadows. But if we do hear anything else, I will keep you guys updated. Let me know what you think of Mr. Beast and Beast Games down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.